Welcome to the race division uh, skippers meeting for the race to Mackinac, Chicago Yacht Club race to Mackinac presented by OneTrust. As I've said for the last five years, the meeting is a courtesy. Um, Skipper and the people, person in charge is responsible to read the notice of race, the sailing instructions, the IRS, understand their certifications, have a backlog of all those emails that have come over the months leading up to this, and understand them and uh, be responsible for them. I'd like to remind you of the media opportunities, um, including Facebook, uh, Twitter, Insta Twitter, and Instagram. Um, and if your boat has a Twitter feed or a Facebook page, email the link to communications at Chicago Yacht Club, and we will get that up on the website. So there's a lot of uh, ways for everyone around, aside from yellow, yellow brick tracking, for, uh, for all of us to see uh, what's going on out here. And with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Commodore Greg Marecki um, to say a few words from the club. Greg. Th thank you all. Uh, thank you, Jay. And um, on behalf of the flag officers, board of directors, and all of the members of the Chicago Yacht Club, I just want to thank you uh, all for coming for the 107th race to Mackinac and uh, welcome you to the Chicago Yacht Club. Most of my role is going to be thanking folks, and so let me get the most important thanks out of the way, and that thanks is to all of you. Uh, we could certainly have sponsors and race committee and uh, the facility and all that kind of stuff, but without you, we would not have a race to Mackinac. So please give yourselves a big round of applause. So we are actually, I think we're actually up 20 entries this year, so thanks uh, to so many of you for coming out for the, uh, for the race this year. Um, we also have a fantastic number of new sponsors, so let me just run through them briefly. Um, we've got Starline Ferry this year. There are discounted ferry tickets available, I understand. We have Synology for your, uh, your uh, sunscreen needs, Sam Adams for all of your beer needs. I understand that their posters are really great this year, um, so take a look at those. Uh, Michigan Avenue Magazine is with us again, the Grand Hotel, longtime sponsor. We have a new broadband provider this year in Marsat. Uh, we've got a couple of new banks this year. One of them is BMO, so welcome to them. We, of course, yeah, go, give, go away, give them a round of applause. Sure, all right. And this, I think, will get a round of applause, too. So many of you, I know, are devotees of rum. We have Mount Gay Rum back with us for, for about 25 years. None of that was a surprise. Um, we have a new sponsor with us this year. We've got some fantastic gear in the tent. That is brought to us courtesy of Line Honors, our official, uh, official logo apparel provider. Welcome them. We've got Vov Placo back with us for a sixth year. So for all of your champagne needs, please welcome them. And, and, and last but not least, I am very pleased and proud to say that we have a new presenting sponsor this year. Um, Wintrust is the presenting sponsor of the 107th race to Mackinac. Uh, they are Chicago's bank, so it's terrific that we uh, have them with us for Chicago's sailboat race. Please give Wintrust a show of appreciation. So I've just been slipped a note. Um, I have a winner of a contest. Now there is, as many of you know, back in 1998 we had our 100th anniversary Mackinac race back in 98. Um, and there was a quilt that many of you were bidding on, and apparently the quilt went for, uh, for auction and actually went for a very high price. So I'm pleased to say that Mr. Ron Groth of the St. Joseph River Yacht Club has won that very, uh, very hot auction. So Ron, if you're around, congratulations. Give Ron a big round of applause for that. Okay. I want to thank a couple of other groups. I want to thank our fantastic Chicago Yacht Club Race Committee, led by our PRO, Hella Getz. They're going to uh, do a great job for us in Chicago on Mackinac Island. Please them, give them a big round of applause. And, and I'd like to thank the Chicago Yacht Club Mackinac Committee. Um, as many of you know, I, I had the privilege of chairing the race several years ago, so I know firsthand how much effort goes into it. So I'd like all the members of the Mac Committee to either stand or wave or do something. Thank you all for a, great, a job well done. So 
at this point, this would normally be where I would introduce my good friend Matt Gallagher, uh, the chair of the race. However, Matt Gallagher, is, uh, he's got a good excuse. He's actually racing right now. Um, so I will not introduce Matt. But filling in for Matt, playing the role of Matt Gallag Gallagher today, please welcome vice chair of the race to Mackinac, Sarah Renz. Afternoon. Are you guys excited? Good. So I get to talk to you about behavior. I know. I am. Behave. No, seriously. Um, please respect the invited competitor, your skipper, the, your boat owner, because it is on them um, if they want to be invited back next year. So. Please respect the rules that we have, respect the island, respect the people that live on the island, and behave. Thank you. Um, everyone has been given a yellow brook transponder, correct? So please put it on your boat. Make sure it sees the sun or the rain, and do not touch it till the end of the race. If you are finishing, you would return it to the Windermere Point tent. If you are continuing on the Super Mac, you will return it to the Bayview finish tent. And if you are doing the Super Mac and then back up for the Bayview Mac, you, I'm sorry, for the Bayview Mac, you will return it to the Bayview tent. But if you're doing the Super Mac, just return it to Bayview Yacht Club. Okay? Great. Um, docking. Very exciting. We have more water up in Mackinac Island, so we have two more feet. So I'd like to introduce Jay Kehoe. He's director of on-water operations for Chicago Yacht Club. And he's been up there. He's actually built additional docks um, to ensure that we have docks to go to on the coal dock. Um, so we have 270 boats fitting into 60 slips. So please respect Jay and his team. There is room at St. Ignis, as always. So if you don't like where you are, they will welcome you. We have three jurors. I would like to introduce Fred Hagerdorn, John Mooney, and Jim Tishner. Thank you, Sarah. Um, two things. One is I want to wish you all a great race. The second thing is to um, point out to you that there were two small changes to the sailing instructions that were posted this afternoon. One is that at the check-in as you're going by on that little parade, the mark has been changed from an orange mark to a red sponsor mark that you go between that and the check-in boat. Uh, the second has to do with the um, starting line and it only uh, gives you the ability to go around the ends legally and not have to worry about the safety zone. Uh, please check it. It's not a big deal. It's what you would do normally, but we're now made it so you don't get in trouble for following the rules. Uh, and finally, this is the time I hope to see you. I hope to see you here. I hope to see you at the parties and nowhere else. And uh, one other person I'd like to thank is Alina Dix, who is going to be our um, jury secretary. Uh, she's actually the hardest working person in this group of four. Thank you all very much and good luck. I'd like to introduce Dr. Tom Kopp, who has been a, doing a medical survey of the race for a few years. Good evening. My name is Thomas Kopp. I'm an emergency medicine uh, physician. Um, many of you may uh, remember over the last year or two, we've been doing, conducting a research study that we're calling the Glory Study, the Great Lakes Offshore Racing Event Study, that uh, takes a look at um, injuries and illnesses that take place during offshore races in the Great Lakes, which hasn't been uh, done yet. Um, this is an example of the survey. Um, we're, we have copies of the surveys around the tent today. There's also going to be staff at, uh, or volunteers at the finishing tent when you put, um, return your finished cards. Um, you can uh, fill out a survey at that time. Um, the types of surveys or the type of injuries and illnesses that we're looking at, anything that you feel needs to be reported in terms of cuts, um, bruises, um, uh, seasickness, et cetera. We're really focusing on 
occurrences during the race itself. So anything that happens before the race, like at the party tonight, won't count. Um, anything that happens on the island, Sarah mentioned some of the bad behaviors that, that uh, she's concerned about, um, those won't count. Um, if you roll your ankle while dancing at horns, that doesn't count. Falling off your bar stool at the pink pony doesn't count. So it's strictly during racing time. So, so far, um, over the past two years, we've collected over 550 surveys, um, one boat or one survey per boat, encompassing over 5,500 sailors. Last year, we were really impressed um, with the response rate we got um, after the Chicago Mackinac was over 80%. However, there were still some learning opportunities. Um, if you get a cut, you don't have to bloody your survey to prove <laughs> that you got cut. All right, we, we, we will take your, we'll take your word for it. Um, <laughs> crayons are acceptable. Uh, we do prefer pen, though, just for the record. Different ways you can submit the, the survey. First, you can, uh, and most commonly, you can turn in at the, uh, at the finish line. We'll have volunteers there. You turn in your yellow brick, your finish card, and the next thing is to fill out the survey. Surveys shouldn't take more than 30 seconds to, to fill out if you have nothing to report. If there's something to report, it may take a, an extra minute or two. So we're really trying to streamline it. Um, you can also set, submit it by fax as well as email. Um, I also want to um, uh, thank uh, Race Chair Chairman Gallagher um, and also Jay Muller for this opportunity to talk to you as well as um, uh, allowing you to participate in the survey. Um, and I also want to recognize that we did receive um, a research grant from the Wilderness uh, Medical Society. So everybody sail safe, sail fast, and we'll see you on the island. So behave and be safe. But I do want to introduce Piero Hella Getz. And on behalf of Mac Gallagher, Chairman, and the Mac Committee, good luck and be safe. Hello, hello. How do you do this? Hello? Hello. Hey, tomorrow's the day. The day that you've been working for all year is here tomorrow. You've done a lot of reading, the SIs, all the race documents. And now what I'd like to do is give you a little visual so that when you get out into that playground area tomorrow, the starting area, you'll have everything identified very quickly. You can get into that box and do what you want to do for your start. Here's our new start flag, the Round Island Live. Yay! And Vicki Matthews is displaying that. She is your DRO. Over here, we have a first visual of the check in area right in front of Navy Pier. So you'll see you'll do your parade past Navy Pier, right along here, and then proceed out to the check in boat. And as uh, Sarah mentioned to you, or whoever mentioned that to you, about the mark, the large mark, there's a change in there, oh, the judge, Judge Brad Hagedorn, that the mark here has been changed from an orange tetrahedron to a sponsor mark, a big red ball. So that's what you'll be looking through. You go through there and then out to the Chicago Harbor Lighthouse exit and to the starting area. Check-in. This is in recess. This is what your check-in boat looks like that will be out by Navy Pier. This is what you will look for. Going out to the starting area, the pin boat is top hat. They will be on the west end of the line. And that's what top hat looks like. And then carrier, which is tied up right here behind me, is the signal boat on the east end of the line. Okay? We'll be on channel 7-8 for the courtesy broadcasts, so tune into that. And when you finish, when you are finished, just to clarify all this, the yellow check-in, or the yellow finish cards need to go with your transponder down to the big top or to the tent within a three hour time period. If you are going on to the Super Mac, you need to take a photo of that yellow card 
and send that to our race coordinator. You still have that three hour time limit, but I'm not so sure you're gonna wanna wait that long. I would do that as soon as you can after you've crossed the line for making sure that we can receive that from you. Okay? So, that's it for that. I'd like to introduce to you the uh, Chicago Park District, no, 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 Park District Police Department, Lieutenant Allison Schloss. She's the commander of the Chicago Police District Marine Unit. Allison, are you here with us? Hey, here she is. And I don't know. Hi, everybody. Is everybody ready to sail? All right, so the most important thing besides winning, right, is that we all get up there safely. So please make sure that you're doing everything as safe as possible so that everybody gets up there safe and sound so they can have a really good party at the end. Right? Yeah. All right, I'm good. Hope hopefully next year I can come up there and party with you. And representing the Coast Guard, Commander Robinson. Hey, good evening, shipmates. You'll have the uh, Coast Guard Cutter Hollyhock escorting you safely up to St. Ign Ignis, but you'll have the Coast Guard Station from Calumet making sure you guys get across the line safely. So you guys have a safe trip. Fair winds the following seas. So we are presenting this, all of the skippers, racers have signed this flag and we would like that the Hollyhock proudly displays this on the top of the boat. So thank you, thank you. This is from <laughs> Next, I'd like to introduce to you the chief measurer, Ron White. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Good afternoon, welcome back. Um, as usual, I get the, uh, the responsibility to announce the course mix. And as you know, over the year, I, years, I've told you a lot of stories about how we've tried to refine and improve the process. Um, and this year, we've, um, to bring a little, a little more to it, we've resorted to some mysticism and, and spiritualism. And uh, we um, have employed a witch doctor. Uh, we're doing a little voodoo, and we were advised that we should have a uh, human sacrifice. So um, in the interest of thinning the herd, I specifically asked for a few volunteers. Uh, they sadly all declined. So uh, we resorted to beheading a rabbit, and we shot a squirrel with my son's pellet gun. So. We've, we've pulled out the stops. Uh, the course mix for both racing divisions is the Chicago Mackinac off-wind mix. I want you to keep in mind that in that there is 12% optimum beat and a lot of reaching content. So this isn't purely spinnaker racing, although who knows, it may be that. Also a nuance for everyone in the super mac for the Super Mac, you're scored using the Chicago Mac all-purpose rating. Um, you don't need to worry about that, but when you go to the Yellow Brick page and view the Super Mac, 
you will see their in progress scoring based on all purpose. If you flip to the yellow brick page that so shows Chicago Mac, you'll see your scoring based on off wind. Um, I also get the privilege every year to uh, introduce our weather briefer, and uh, you know, Chris, his his accomplishments, his 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 uh, winning record on numerous programs is legendary. Um, most recently, he was the uh, um, the weather router for Abu Dhabi, who won the uh, Volvo Ocean Race. So, congratulations, Chris, on another great victory. Um, I asked Chris this morning, you know, I said, how many years have we been doing this now? And neither of us were sure. And he goes, well, I, you know, I think it's 10. And it actually reminded me, you know, I make a lot of crap up up here. But uh, it reminded me of an absolutely true story. Do you remember when we used to do this down at the Field Museum? Yeah, yeah, yeah good day. And we had a longtime legendary Chicago weather forecaster, and he was starting to get a little iffy, perhaps. And the very last year he did it, I was standing off in the wings and listening to the briefing, and there were a couple of us back there, and we looked at each other and we go, when did all this change? <laughs> and it was, it was totally wonky. And so after he was done, I walked across the stage, and this, you know, this is back in the old days, I looked at the overhead projector and the, and the, the slides that were on it. He had actually done the briefing based on the prior year's weather forecast. <laughs> Um, so when I was talking to Chris, I thought, we really got to start keeping an eye on this guy. Because <laughs> I swore that as long as I was around, that would never happen again. But with great pleasure, I introduce our friend Chris Bedford. I'm not sure who's leaving first, Ron. Well, I see that the race doesn't have a uh, water sponsor, so I'm going to give you a little advice. I've been drinking smart water now for a long, long time. It doesn't work. <laughs> All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here uh, briefing you. And uh, every year is a little bit different weather-wise. and. Uh, this year is certainly no, no exception to that. Uh, as always, you gotta keep an eye on the official forecast. We are gonna have some weather coming across the lake uh, at some point during this race. At the moment, I don't think it's gonna be super severe or anything, but these uh, things can always change, especially around this part of the country this time of year. So uh, you really should be monitoring the uh, uh, weather and the VHF uh, uh, NOAA broadcasts. I know they suck to listen to, but uh, they do have some good information uh, in there. And if there's anything big coming, uh, that's probably going to be uh, your first warning uh, before you see it with your eyes. So keep an eye on that. Always stay connected. As I say, keep uh, ear to the radio. Um, also, uh, on the Twitter feed, we'll be putting some uh, uh, weather updates periodically, some short uh, little weather updates. We're using the Twitter hashtag MacWX for, uh, for sort of as a clearinghouse for weather information. Also, for those of you that uh, have um, routing software um, on the uh, race uh, weather page on, on our website, uh, there will be some high resolution grip files that you can download and uh, look at, and we'll keep those going through the, through the Super Mac uh, race. All right, let's get started. First thing we want to look at is the possibility of severe weather. As I said, things can uh, deteriorate quick, quickly around this, in this part of the country this time of year. So uh, right now we're looking at uh, uh, the sort of lighter green area on this chart uh, shows the area of possible general thunderstorms. The uh, darker green area indicates a marginal risk of severe thunderstorms. And severe thunderstorms, remember, uh, mean frequent lightning, which is thunderstorms, so it's kind of obvious. Uh, but heavy rain that can reduce visibility, 
uh, hail, water spouts, and also strong wind gusts, uh, 45 knots. To, for a storm to be a severe thunderstorm, it has to have a wind gust of 45 knots in it. So um, that can be, and they can come on pretty quick. So you wanna uh, be ready for that. So on the forecast chart, we do have an area of marginal uh, severe risk moving into the southern half of the lake. Um, I think most of that would be uh, tomorrow evening and uh, tomorrow night, if indeed it does develop. So we, are, we do have a small risk of something happening. That area sort of expands across the southern half of the lake on Sunday, <coughs> and uh, actually there's a higher risk of severe thunderstorms just to the west of Lake Michigan. The northern part of the lake has a, a risk of thunderstorms, but at the moment, nothing severe. And then going into Monday, most of that severe weather sort of slides down to the south uh, of the Great Lakes. And while the weather won't necessarily be great on Monday, uh, as far as risk for th severe thunderstorms, I think we're pretty low. All right, let's get to the meat of the subject. These are the current conditions. We have a high pressure area, which is sitting over uh, the uh, Illinois-Indiana border at the moment. And uh, that is moving very, very slowly to the east. It's going to be around tomorrow. And even uh, into Sunday, it's going to have a little bit of an extension down into the southern uh, Great Lakes region. So it's going to be around for a little while. But I want to draw your attention to the warm front that you see through Nebraska, uh, Kansas, and Missouri. And uh, that is feature is going to be lifting up to the north. Early forecast earlier this week actually had this thing coming in to the to the lake uh, sort of tonight uh, time frame, but uh, that has slowed down because we need to wait for this high to, to uh, push out of the way. And also, we're going to have low pressure developing over the high plains, and we need to, some time for that to get going. Then that will in turn draw that warm air north once it gets uh, once it gets rolling. Uh, this is the uh, visible satellite picture. Uh, which, uh, as you can see, there isn't much going on. There is that cloud mass down to the south uh, and east of us, but it's uh, moving away, uh, just sort of some fair weather clouds. And you can see a nice uh, lake breeze uh, on, uh, on the lake where it's clear over the lake, and then we've got cumulus just inland. It's a classic lake breeze situation. Here's the current radar. All the rain is uh, moving out to the southeast, and it uh, looks like it's going to be a dry evening and into tomorrow morning. Uh, this is the wind field from a little bit earlier this afternoon. We had a light lake breeze uh, sitting uh, just uh, offshore here. Uh, but up to the north, you can see there is stronger gradient. As you get away from that high pressure area, the, the isobars pack, pack closer together, and we get a bit more uh, uh, wind in that area. Uh, wave heights, obviously, with the light winds, we don't uh, got pretty flat water out there. Now, here's the interesting chart. This is the uh, sea, uh, lake surface water temperature, and uh, it's fairly cold this year again. And um, particularly over that southern part of the lake, there's a core of uh, water that's sort of in the 56 uh, degree Fahrenheit range. And what that does is it it acts as like a magnet for the high pressure. So the high pressure is going to settle in over that cooler water where the air is cooler, and it's going to be very slow for it to, to get scoured out by any incoming gradient. And so even tomorrow, there's uh, going to be kind of an extension or a bubble of that larger synoptic high pressure area hanging back just over the lake. That's good news for you all because it actually means there will be a lake breeze tomorrow. And uh, Lake Breeze uh, is, uh, it'll be a fairly reliable Lake Breeze. And I also think that it's going to be a stronger Lake Breeze than what the cruising division saw today. All right, so the uh, uh, high pressure, this is a forecast chart for tomorrow morning. You can see the high pressure still in place, sitting over northern Indiana, southern Michigan, and northern Ohio. Uh, the warm front down to the southwest there is just starting to lift to the north, and you'll see some. Uh, green shading and, and lines, and that's an area of rain and showers and thunderstorms that's uh, moving out ahead of that low pressure area. Uh, on the wind field tomorrow morning, I expect to have a southerly flow uh, across most of the lake in the morning. Now, I actually think that the wind field, you can see it's quite light off of Chicago. It'll be a little bit of a land breeze um, 
uh, overnight. But because the lake is so cold, the land breezes are weaker. Colder lake means stronger lake breezes, weaker land breezes. So there won't be a whole lot of land breeze action um, happening here. But uh, to the center part of the lake, where it shows sort of about a five to eight knot uh, uh, southerly flow, I actually think that's going to be a lot lighter than what the model is indicating because of that cold water. When you have that cold water, it's very difficult to mix higher momentum air down to the, down to the water surface. Uh, so this is the forecast wind field now for tomorrow afternoon. And what you see is a big light patch over the southeastern part of Lake Michigan. And that's that little bubble high that I was talking about. That's uh, sitting there. Now that could actually be a little bit further to the north and west than what it's indicating here. But even with that said, where we have lake breeze going, you can see the flow is tilted in from the southeast here at Chicago. I think that will be in place. It's just a matter of where that light patch is. Is it way off in the southeast corner of the lake or is it more in the south central part of the lake, basically uh, closer to the rum line? And my feeling is that it may actually be a little bit further uh, north than that. Um, so going, uh, jumping ahead to Sunday uh, morning, we've got the um, uh, high pressure which is, is uh, sitting uh, over um, the Illinois, actually let me go back, Ron, I might have screwed up my slides. Hang on a second. Yeah, there we go. Let's, let's just go to this right here. This is, this is Saturday evening. And uh, you can see that light spot still in the southeastern part of the lake, but a nice lake breeze blowing on the Illinois-Wisconsin uh, shore. So better pressure over on this side of the lake. Uh, and within a few miles of the shore, that's probably where it will be strongest. Further up the lake, you can see we have that southerly gradient. Again, you're further away from the high pressure area, so we've got the isobars tightening up uh, in that area there. Now going to Sunday morning, we've got um, um, a bit of a southeasterly developing. So we've gone from this southerly flow at uh, 7 p.m. Saturday to the wind kind of uh, backing around more southeast uh, Sunday night. And the reason for that is that warm front that's coming up to, toward uh, the southern part of the lake. As that front approaches, the gradient will back left and become more southeasterly with time. We also see a light patch developing in the sort of north uh, or the central part of Lake Michigan. And that's the model telling us that there may be some showers and thunderstorms moving off the Wisconsin shore into the lake uh, by this time. Uh, so there may be some rain developing uh, tomorrow afternoon in Wisconsin that moves offshore overnight into the lake. Now we can go to 7 o'clock Sunday. This looks better. And we've got um, uh, the uh, low pressure, we, we've got the warm front just entering the southern part of the lake. The high now has finally shifted out to the eastern lakes. And uh, the thing that's new on this chart from what we saw before is that little low pressure that's developed over Wisconsin. And it appears as though there's going to be a low pressure, uh, like a wave developing on that front and moving from west to east across uh, central Lake Michigan. And uh, as I go forward in time here, you'll, you'll be able to see that. But if you imagine the anti-clockwise circulation around the, the low pressure, if you're south of that low, the wind is going to be going more south and southwest. If you're north of that low, it's going to be going more southeast and east. All right, so here's the wind forecast for Sunday. And I've put the low uh, where the, the model uh, is expecting it to be, just entering uh, Lake Michigan around this time. And so you can see the circulation that seems to be developing uh, around that low pressure area with southwest winds to the south of it and east and maybe even some northeast winds to the north of it. And then the northern part of the lake is getting quite um, uh, soft at this time. And again, as that low comes out, it's likely to come out with some showers and some thunderstorms associated with it. And those will actually kind of contaminate this wind field. So even though the circulation looks kind of neat and orderly on, on this chart, the real wind field is likely to be somewhat more confused with uh, the winds adjusted uh, around individual rain cells on the lake. It's very difficult to make those detailed predictions uh, at this moment. 
So by, by Sunday afternoon, that low moves very slowly to the east and gets to the Michigan shore, and we get a little burst of northerly behind it as it comes onto the shore. So the wind shifts around uh, from the east to the northeast and then to the north, northeast, or north on the other side of it. Now, some of previous forecasts of this had a much stronger northerly uh, occurring behind this low, but that doesn't look like it's going to be the case. It looks like there may be a little bit of a push from the north as it goes by, uh, but then the wind field will actually start to soften from west to east. So sometimes Sunday afternoon is when we have the maximum northerly component wind on the lake, and then it gradually uh, eases off going into Sunday uh, night. And here we are uh, on Monday, uh, morning at one o'clock and you can see that the wind field collapses very very quickly on the lake at this time and that's because this is just a wave of low pressure it's not the main low the, the primary low is still sitting out to the west of uh, Wisconsin Minnesota that doesn't come across until uh, sort of Monday Tuesday and uh, and until that comes through then we won't get a push of, of uh, a sustained push of northerly on the lake all right, so here is the forecast for uh, Monday morning, and you can see the low by this time has shifted to somewhere around the Michigan Thumb or Southern Lake Huron area. And as I said, the main low is still out to the west over uh, Minnesota and the Dakotas, and that front is just lying uh, back between the uh, Michigan Thumb and uh, the primary low area. And so this is the forecast for Monday morning, and you can see that the winds are starting to adjust to the new wind field um, over Lake Michigan now. They're, they're coming, they're returning back in from the east and southeast at this time. And uh, so they're starting to respond to that gradient around the main low pressure area, which is still out to the west. On Huron, the, that's, as that low shifts east, Lake Huron gets that push of northerly, just like Lake Michigan did. And then there's this little calm plot in between those two, two breezes moving across uh, Michigan. Now we're to Monday morning, sorry, early Monday afternoon, and we're returning to a southerly flow on Lake Michigan. Uh, it's lighter up in the northern part of the lake. There's not a really strong gradient up there, and in fact, there could be lake breezes around uh, the Michigan shore on uh, Monday afternoon. In the lake Huron, for uh, the fast boats that are going on for the um, Super Mac, there's a bit of northerly flow still in place. All right, then Monday afternoon, the whole gradient just kind of falls to pieces and it gets quite light. Uh, we may have lake breezes on Lake Huron, uh, lake breezes in the northern part of Lake Michigan, um, but uh, basically now we're watching for that low to come moving across uh, Michigan and uh, that happens overnight uh, into Tuesday morning. So very light winds again as we go into Tuesday, especially in Lake Huron. Uh, we can see there's a little bit of a, a high pressure circulation that, that comes across. That's actually the old lake breeze that's dying away. And then on Tuesday morning, the main low finally gets to the east of, uh, of Huron and, and Michigan. And then it starts to tap into some colder uh, more dense air that's up over southern Canada. And once the primary low gets east, then that push of colder air can finally come south. And that's what starts to develop during the day on Tuesday. We'll start to, that lows out to the east and we'll start to get northerly flow um, that starts to pick up on the lakes. Very light at this time up across the Mac Straits. Um, but uh, stronger breezes in the open waters on both Lake Michigan and Lake Huron. And here we are uh, a Tuesday evening, and you can see that northerly flow really starting to build now up on Lake Michigan, and uh, that's going to spread across into Lake Huron for the uh, following days. And here we are Wednesday morning for the boats in the Supermac. We've got the uh, high pressure moving through Ontario. The primary cold front behind that low is cleared uh, Lake Huron and so we'll start to get a push of stronger north and northeast winds so that on Wednesday we've got uh, uh, that sort of mid-teens to, mid to low-20s pressure moving along across.
across Lake Huron for the uh, boats that are running into, uh, uh, into the finish of the Supermac. So I ran a whole bunch of routes with different uh, speed boats and the like, and really there isn't a huge difference um, uh, in the courses. Now, if you look at least in the southern part of the lake, you'll see there's some significant differences in the northern part of the lake, and that's because of this confused wind field that we have uh, during the day on uh, Sunday into Monday uh, with that low pressure that moves across the lake. So the southern part of the lake, it sort of favors being on the Wisconsin side for lake breeze early on, and then coming across to the Michigan shore. There's uh, some routes that are going inside the Manitous, some going outside the Manitous. I really, I really think that that's a decision that'll have to be made later, depending upon how this uh, um, uh, weather pans out with, that, are, that is moving across the lake with this low pressure area. So an interesting forecast, a lot of action. As I said, we, we need to be aware that there could be some severe weather on the lake, so make sure you're uh, staying uh, in tune with, with what's going on, not only around you, but also further away from you, as you uh, by listening to the NOAA weather radio and pay attention to any warnings or advisories. Have a fast race, have a safe race, and thanks very much. And that's like change. Whoop. That's like change from this morning, apparently. So, um, thank you all. This will be posted on YouTube, so you can watch uh, everything over and over again uh, in case you missed anything. Uh, sail fast, be safe, and have fun. Thank you for coming.